Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, organizers, uh, for this wonderful event. I feel very much uh, privileged. I have um, just been uh, reading and you know hearing about London School of Economics, and that today is a reality. Thank you so much. So my name is Albert. Um, um, I'm a PhD student at um, University of Reading. My area of um, research or interest is uh, agricultural uh, um, economics, um, climate change, and generally um, European economics. Um, I'm looking at um, how uh, air pollution um, affects uh, agricultural production, the case of Zambia. So um, mining uh, spans as way back as uh, a century ago. Uh, mining uh, started in Zambia as early as um, the 1920s. And um, there are basically seven large scale uh, copper mines uh, in Zambia that are operational in Zambia. And our study uh, zeroes in on uh, the large scale copper mines, um, trying to exclude um, artisanal uh, mines uh, because they are largely uh, dominated in gemstone and they are much you know, um, informal. So among the seven um, large scale uh, copper mines in Zambia, three have got um, operational copper smelters. And the total uh, smelting capacity for these uh, three copper smelters uh, gets to 1.2 million metric tons um, of copper, making Zambia um, the highest in the continent in terms of uh, copper smelting um, capacity. Okay, But the copper smelting capacity and all these um, uh, resources that Zambia has doesn't come with pitfalls. Uh, copper smelting has a potential of adversely affecting the environment um, through, for example, acid rock uh, drainages, contamination of underground water, as well as uh, surface water. So a few studies that have been undertaken in Zambia about uh, pollution uh, from these copper mining activities ascertains the fact that there are three major uh, pollutants that comes from copper smelters. Namely, the sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, as well as um, heavy stones affluent. In fact, the, Africa, the Air Pollution Information Network of Africa alluded to the fact that uh, sulfur dioxide and particulate matter are the highest in terms of um, pollution. In fact, uh, in the annual reports of Zambia uh, Environmental Management Agency, um, documents the fact that uh, the large scale copper mines, in fact, goes beyond their set limit by 101% uh, percent to 155%. Percent. So agriculture on the copper belt. So Zambia is a vast territory uh, that spans in the area about 752,000 kilometer uh, square. So Zambia is classified in three agro um, ecological zones. The first one that is predominantly in the southern part of Zambia is a dry zone. Uh, that every time that we experience El Nino droughts, uh, the, uh, it's the southern and the part of the western part that is um, largely impacted. The median one, the medium uh, rainfall zone is in agro uh, ecological two, which is just the central part of Zambia, you know, capital and part of the eastern part. While the, uh, the third agroecological zone is the highest uh, rainfall zones where Copper Belt and Northwestern Province belong. And the Copper Belt and Northwestern Province are the ones that borders the Democratic Republic of Congo, closer to the uh, intertropical convergence zones, is the wettest zone and receives uh, precipitation between or more than 1,000 uh, millimeter per annum. Okay? Maize is a major uh, crop that is cultivated in the main region of the Copper Belt and the northwestern provinces of Zambia. In fact, over 90% of the smallholder farmers um, cultivate maize. In fact, it's a very, very political uh, crop in Zambia. 
because this is the particular crop that is uh, usually targeted for uh, agricultural interventions that I'm about to talk about. It also, the two provinces contributes about 21% in, you know, to the national yield, um, taking, you know, reference to 2021, 2022 farming season, um, as, as Zambia Statistical Agency alluded. The second most staple uh, uh, crop in the region is also cassava. 50%, at least 50% of the small scale farmers also uh, produce cassava. So pollution um, and agriculture, they are opposing um, um, effects um, in literature. Um, for example, large uh, majority of literature that has been done on the relationship between pollution and agriculture uh, shows that there is actually a negative um, effects of pollution on yield. Because the argument has been that um, pollution affects the stomata on the leaves of the plants and also uh, cause or changes the acidity of the soil. For example, uh, Joshua Mayfield is a recent a paper in India that showed the negative relationship between yield of uh, the Indian agricultural yield on um, pollution from coal plants from uh, burnings of, uh, in the coal plants. Then Arogan and Root also did the study in Ghana and the Ashanti region, where he found a negative relationship between the mining, the pollution from uh, gold mining and agricultural production in India. On the other hand, there are a few studies also that have actually shown that in fact, uh, pollution of sulfur dioxide uh, may uh, act as a nutrient to the soil and shows a positive effect of sulfur <coughs> Uh, on production, particularly Sanders and Bereka in the, in the US showed um, that actually um, sulfur uh, increased in the soil and actually uh, raised, caused an increase or positive relation to uh, the yields of uh, corn and soybeans. And this is um, actually uh, in the wet season. A few studies have made arguments that when sulfur is deficient in the soil, particularly at the critical stage of maize, uh, crops might go down as much as 75% and so on. And this is um, under a wet season. Remember, in the under, in a wet environment, remember that our study area is the copper belt in Zambia, which is uh, the wettest and uh, receives much more uh, rainfall. So this paper, we intend to um, answer these questions. How does pollution affect, how does copper mine uh, pollution affects agricultural productivity? Or how does uh, pollution interact with uh, the major agricultural interventions in Zambia? Okay, so this is of paramount importance for the country because it borders on sustainable mining as well as pro uh, agricultural productivity, uh, which is central to the national uh, development goals. So the data, um, we've used several um, sources of data here. We have the Rural Agricultural Livelihood Survey for 2012, 2015, and uh, 2020, 2019. And with about 7,200 households across the three you know, wharves. And then we restricted the farms that are living or that are doing farms farming within the radius of 90 kilometers. For some, for some reason that um, air pollution travels as, as far as 100 kilometers. So we calculate the yield, the weight of maize divided by um, hectares harvested for maize, important crops for Zambia, and cassava. The other variables that we use is FISIP, the Farmers Input Support Program, which is a positive agricultural intervention where government um, subsidizes, fertilizers, uh, you know, um, seed, and so on. And then we found that from the sample, there are forty percent of the farmers at least um, have access to FISIP. And also, the other uh, positive interventions is adoption of hybrid uh, seed. So from our sample, sixty-five percent uh, of the farmers. Um, adopts hybrid seed. So the other uh, data is we use in our regressions, we use 
exogenous changes in wind direction. Uh, we get the wind data from National Center of Atmospheric Research uh, for the uh, growing season November and March. So because the growing season for the countries are uh, November and March. So we distinguish between the mines that have operational copper, copper smelters and the ones that do not have smelters. Okay, so in terms of exposure variable, we use both the number of quarters, the number of times the wind blows towards the farm and the distance from the source of pollution to the, um, to the farms. So this is the continuous exposure measure. So here, I'm just trying to show the binary measure to the top quarter of index production. You find that the harrow um, in blue are considered exposed because the wind is moving towards the farm and they are doing farming within uh, the radius of 90 kilometers. And then this mine here um, with a big hollow here is a mine without, um, it's, it's the fourth mine without a copper smelter, but it is much closer to a mine that has got a smelter and therefore it is excluded you know, from the sun. Yes, because you would find that between districts, the distance is only uh, 50 kilometers from apart. And then we've got one mine with a smelt and one doesn't. And this is the case of what is happening. So this is just the characteristics of um, uh, the data that we have. We don't see much you know, differences um, in terms of the exposed and the unexposed, particularly for the important uh, variables in our studies. But what is just a, of a major difference is whether the farm accesses FISIP, which is a major agricultural uh, intervention or not. So this is a motivational evidence that we're trying to see correlation um, between youth for males and um, the invest distance, which is uh, the exposure variable. So what we see here is that there is no correlation uh, between exposure to the smelter and the maize yields for the farmers um, with access to the feces. The uh, red line above the blue one here shows more or less like no correlation. But surprisingly, there's a positive correlation between uh, exposure to the smelter and the yields for farmers that do not have access to feces or um, uh, uh, um, adopts hybrid seeds. So we go on trying to estimate um, our uh, motivational uh, evidence. So the independent variable here is either maize or cassava in logs, and then XP is the exposure that I talked about, the continuous um, exposure um, index. And H takes the value of one if the farm has access to FISIP and or um, hybrid maize. So hybrid and FISIP are two um, important um, agricultural interventions. Okay. And then X uh, is a group of controls. Um, epsilon is the cluster uh, Robert standard errors. So quickly getting into the results between farm comparisons, we've actually seen that exposure to a uh, smelter is associated to higher uh, yield, but it disappears for the farms that are adopting uh, hybrid seed. And then this has to be explored further because I think that um, this one is trying to go in the line with those few studies that are showing a positive relationship between uh, exposure to sulfur dioxide as pollution and yield. Okay. And then what we have seen is that when we add fixed effects, that is within farm uh, comparisons, we've actually seen that hybrid seed, adop farmers adopting hybrid seed increases their yield, but less if they are exposed to the smelter, that is three. So with this one, this again agrees with the large in a body of literature that shows the adverse relationship between exposure to um, air pollution and um, agricultural use. Okay. 
we if we're just on the side of the dog, the, the idea is that if you don't have a smelter, the plants are not affected because there's no air pollution. Is that the distinction between the two sets of columns? Yeah, because um, if we look at uh, the columns, the equations four, yeah. five, and six, there seems to be uh, no effect because the results are not um, significant here. They are not just, they're just taking the ore out and transporting it, whereas in the switch smelter, they're smelting it and that's spreading air pollution. Is that right? I mean, that's yes. Issue. Yes. So, given that none of the results in column four up to six is significant, there are some reasons to believe that the whatever is happening, uh, the variations in the yield between the two crops, maize and cassava, has something to do uh, with the presence of. Uh, smelters in some areas. Sorry, did you actually estimate the effect on air pollution? So the like the first stage of wind. So I, the way I understand it is the exposure variable is just uh, the number of days the wind blows in the direction. But like, did you actually estimate whether it increases the exposure to pollution in these areas? Sorry, I didn't get the, the last part. So I guess the idea is that the wind blows, transports pollution to the to the maize fields. Yes. Uh, did you check that empirically? Like, what is the, like, whether that is, like, how big that effect is? How much more pollution is there in the area because of the wind? No, we we, we just used uh, wind because the understanding is, obviously, when you're talking about air pollution, uh, it should be carried, you know, through the wind. So surprisingly, um, the, the, the same results actually, uh, we have the similar results when we interact um, uh, exposure with access to feces. We have the same results. Uh, you find that the uh, mines that do not have copper smelters are much insignificant in terms of trying to show whether exposure affects youth or not, and whether exposure alone or access to hybrid alone uh, would affect yield. So this is the cassava. Um, here, we have actually shown that there is a negative and notable negative relationship between the yield of cassava and uh, the exposure. And uh, this is something that we are uh, trying to uh, discuss. Uh, with the crop scientists to see how cassava, why cassava has behaved completely different from maize, because this is a notable uh, negative effect. Okay, maybe it's the features of uh, the plant that is you know different from maize or not. We are in talks with the agronomists just to find out why cassava has behaved like this for the farmers on the copper belt of Zambia, the regions of Zambia. And then we have seen from the results that. Uh, there's a positive uh, effect of exposure to smelter for the farmers that do not have, um, do not access feces or um, adopt the hybrid uh, maize. But we try to see how whether this differs by the level of production, <coughs> uh, by basically trying to interact the exposure variable with the uh, the binary uh, variable for the uh, yield distribution in quartiles, and then we find that. The additional results that we find here is that the positive effects of exposure to smelter diminishes as the farm, you know, approaches the production front. And this is both. This is uh, exactly the same uh, for the farmers that uh, have feces or do not have. Maybe the pos uh, the possible explanation would be uh, differences in behavior, you know, uh, or external factors, and so on. But I think that um, what the major take that we have seen thus far, although we are trying to explore different mechanisms, you know, exploring heterogeneity and possible uh, trying to investigate different behaviors between farmers that live within copper smelters. But the take that we have is that pollution from the mine, from copper mines actually uh, diminishes the positive effect of um, farmers input support program, which is a huge agricultural intervention that government does year in and year out, and that less productive farmers benefit more from the exposure 
of uh, pollution from the smelters. Thank you very much.